Hello and welcome. Thank you very much for joining this session. My name is Carsten Rossenhofer from EANTC, and it is my pleasure to introduce to you the results of this year's multi-vendor SDN interoperability event that we conducted specifically for the benefit of this conference. Typically, I would be in Paris with all of the hardware behind me on stage, and I would be presenting the results live to you. Unfortunately, we still were not able to come back, but I look forward to see you face to face soon again next year. So EANTC, for those who don't know us, stands for European Advanced Networking Test Center. We are an independent test lab based in Berlin in Germany. We've been around for 20 years. And when we don't do these interop events, our main focus is to do benchmarking, performance testing, and a realistic evaluation of network technology for tel telecom equipment manufacturers, for service providers, and for enterprise operators alike. The goals of this year's event were really to validate the multi-vendor interoperability, current status of SDN, so it's by the transport network technology. And although we have done this for quite a while, it's always great to see uh, how the solutions mature, how they expand, and how the technology becomes more aware of realistic use case scenarios. This time, we focus specifically on the enterprise and cloud data center services and interconnection use case with all of the complexities of eVPN options and, uh, and so on. And we also focused on the 5G X hall network requirement for slicing in the back hall, in the mid hall, and in the front hall. And especially in the front hall, it's a rather new challenge now that we see disaggregated RANs coming up. We focused on all the innovations in the related six technologies ranging from the transport, from the network control and orchestration uh, to um, some new hardware types and also to the clock synchronization. So the vendors participating in this event were uh, 10 vendors with a lot of different types of equipment, routers, um, edge equipment, clock synchronization, testing tools, and so on. We had the pleasure of having Arista, Calnex, Sienna, Cisco, Huawei, Juniper, Microchip, Nokia, Ribbon, and Spirant join us this time. The overall end-to-end -end network looked like this. So you can see the different areas here from the service provider, from the data center interconnection use case scenario uh, to different types of uh, SDN, uh, PSAP, and so on use case scenarios. And all in all, we had many different multi-vendor combinations cabled and uncabled throughout the event. In, in the end, we connected everybody as much as possible in one uh, joint scenario. On the top, not to be forgotten, you see all of the management equipment. So some vendors also brought their orchestrators, which we uh, connected through NetConf with the common Yang models to the uh, routers on the test. And uh, they were also a very important part of this infrastructure. Of course, also our hot staging test event happened in a hybrid model. We were able to welcome some of our customers back in Berlin, but it was an on-site and remote collaboration that was really at the heart of the productivity. We prepared the event for four months, as usual, with a lot of conference calls, uh, wiki exchanges, detailed test plan and configuration guides. Then we ran the event in two weeks of very intense hot staging effort with all of the hardware being located, deployed in Berlin and connected with each other. And we had around 70 experts in total from the 10 participating vendors, some remote, many local. Um, there was a strong focus on the remote collaboration. And I think that's one of the things that we learned from the COVID pandemic that will stay and that will help to improve the efficiency of remote collaboration in the future. In the end, we had more than 500 result sets recorded totally 537 over two weeks, which is a tremendous achievement. And I'm really happy about the experts uh, last level support that we got from the vendors. Uh, we had in total 108 devices on the test from the participants, 44 unique device types. So that tells you some vendors also brought multiple units of the same type of device to speed up the testing and to parallelize it. And uh, we had a, a big focus on eVPN with one third of the tests here, on segment routing with 27% of the tests and so on. Um, and the clocking was also a very important uh, part of the testing as in previous events as well. So looking at the results highlights, of course, it is way too much. We have a 45 page white paper published 
And I cannot touch on all of the results highlights in detail as much as I would because the time is limited here. So let's just go through some very high level things for now. In the segment routing area, we covered segment routing over MPLS and over SRV6 as previously. We see that SRV6 is growing in industry adoption and it still has not reached the same level as SR MPLS, but it's, uh, the interoperability is very uh, good. And we verified specifically the network convergence, uh, focusing on the topology independent loop-free alternate, TILFA, including a remote uh, segment routing link group protection where groups of links fail over at the same time based on one single event. In the EVPN section, uh, we were able to confirm all the basic routing and switching and loop prevention use cases. And I think for the next event, we're going to skip the basic test cases because we can conclude EVPN is already sufficiently mature in a multi-vendor environment between the participating vendors, of course. I cannot speak for the whole industry. Uh, we focused on all active multi-hope scenarios where it's not only an active passive failover, but an active active um, use of the EVPN service across multiple links. And uh, we specifically focused on the data center interconnection scenarios. As I said in the beginning, that was one of the most important use cases. And uh, we also looked at multicast scenarios. Multicast is becoming, again, more important for some applications um, in different industries. The next topic was FlexAlgo. FlexAlgo is a method to do policy-based routing in SDN transport networks. And FlexAlgo uh, has been covered already two years ago in one of our events, if you might remember. But back then we were only to do the most, only able to do the most basic coverage because the technology was so new. Now we actually witnessed uh, that it has matured a lot and that the participating vendors were really able to test advanced scenarios. Um, to group the network into a couple of different uh, policies. And then we verified by link de delay measurements that uh, the policies were actually implemented correctly. The Flex Algo was also grouped with the telemetry solutions and uh, links were put into administrative groups and uh, different traffic engineering metrics were applied. In the path computation uh, um, area, PSAP, with the PSAP protocol, we tested successfully uh, the use of controllers and clients um, in a multi-vendor scenario, of course. So the controllers from one vendor were typically uh, managing the um, clients from other vendors. And we validated specifically the single AS traffic engineering with PSAP. Um, it was tested successfully between most vendors. Admittedly, it's a very complex protocol and we will continue to cover it in future events. We had a pass initiated from both uh, a PCE and the PCC from the client and the controller. And we also covered here colored segment routing policies and on-demand next hops. And we managed these SR policies via BGP. This is also another flavor of uh, supporting slicing and uh, it's one more step towards a 5G use case scenario. FlexE is an edge access uh, technology, hardware technology, and FlexE provides um, the multi-vendor channelization and bandwidth adjustment, which we were able to confirm. Um, it's a good step to do a, a layer two shim layer based um, management of uh, slices that is not requiring very advanced uh, SDN support from the edge equipment. And finally, in clock synchronization, uh, this group advanced their topics a lot. Uh, for the first time, we tested class D boundary clocks. Class D clocks uh, were just standardized in uh, G8273.2. And the class D clocks um, promised to achieve much better precision. We reached uh, better than the service than the standard requirement of 260 nanoseconds across a couple of the implementations. And uh, we also maintained the um, phase performance uh, in the edge, even over Flex E. 
So we, we um, overall concluded that all of the PTP testing has done another great step forward with the introduction of the class C and D clocks. Of course, the coverage is limited and we hope to extend the number of participants for the next event, especially in the clock sync area. Uh, we also tested enhanced sync E. Sync E is coming back, especially in the front hall area where some of the uh, radio units now require PTP to be active in addition to sync E. So that's why we tested this enhanced sync E protocol as well. In summary, if you look at the uh, state of the technology, which I've plotted here across something similar to the Gartner hype cycle, you can see that most of the technologies are, are well advanced. We do not see anybody in the introduction phase here. We don't see anybody uh, on the peak of inflated expectations in the, on the left-hand side of this diagram. But there are still a number of technologies which, which do require more coverage. Um, standardized Yang models are a big concern for us because a lot of the network orchestration still relies on custom proprietary Yang models that needs to be improved and we will put a lot of effort into this kind of testing in the future. And um, naturally some recently introduced technology like class D clocks uh, need to see a wider support in the industry. But apart from that, everything is lined up here on the way to consolidation and massive adoption. Maybe I'm a little too pessimistic. Some of you might see already EVPN in the area of massive adoption, I would not object but that's just the snapshot from ENTC's point of view as seen throughout our test events where we cover the more advanced scenarios, which are more challenging. So all of the results of our tests are summarized in a detailed white paper as always. Uh, this time it's 44 pages, so a lot to read. And the goal is always to make sure that um, readers can completely understand the technology and reproduce the results. So it's uh, anticipated, um, obviously, uh, by service writers and analysts, as this slide says, we hope that you, that you will have a benefit reading it. It's available free of charge and without any registration wall on our website. In addition, we also have a number of multi-vendor demonstrations recorded. We cannot be in Paris, as I said, so we did record the multi-vendor demos in advance and they are all available on our YouTube channel and accessible through our website. You can see the topics here in detail. Uh, so timing support, EVPN interworking, and so on and so on. And all of the experts from the participating vendors uh, are recorded here on video as well. So I highly recommend to uh, listen and watch these videos with some live demos. So thanks very much for your interest. And as I said, I hope it was it's beneficial, this kind of testing. And I look forward to seeing you back in Paris next year. Thank you very much.